Hi, and welcome to Get Me To New York vlog 9. 9. Um, I'm rattling through these this weekend to make sure that I've caught up, but as of today, today is Sunday the 15th of May, and I now have 20 days, 20 days to go until my goal, which when we first set it, I had about six weeks to go, and now it's down to just under three weeks, so really scary, really exciting. So much has happened, so much has changed, um, and although I very much enjoy the vlogging process, like I absolutely love it, I found it really hard to do a vlog every day about this particular subject and about um, all the things that go into committing to and achieving your goal. And I don't know why that is, because it's almost as if when I'm on here just giving you know advice or talking about what I've done or information that I've come across or anything like that, I can talk all day. But when it's something that's so personal and when it's something that you're working towards so much and you're really putting everything on the line for, it's really scary to talk about it because this is absolutely immortalised in film. You know, if if something happens and, I mean, for example, if something happens and in 20 days we, we don't get to New York on the specific day that we were meant to go, it's not the end of the world. It will just be, it's delayed a few weeks. Um, and usually when, when that happens, if it's if it's for a good reason, it's not just like procrastination and it's not, you know, failure to do something. It's just the case of there's there's other priorities and the existing businesses that we have are more important than a new business that we're starting. That's that's always the way it goes. So if something goes wrong with them or if the team need me or something, then that's always my priority to go back to that. But that would only be a delay maybe of a week or two. But that's understandable and that's something that you can explain away. It's what if it never happens and what if it doesn't happen? The, the wee thought creeps into the back of your mind and goes, you're actually doing a whole YouTube series. Probably got between like maybe 10 and 20 people watching me each time I do this vlog. I've put it all over social media. Um, you know, I've got a couple hundred followers on Instagram, a couple hundred friends on Facebook. And every single one of them knows that I'm working Mars off just now to achieve this one goal. And that's big. I think, I don't know if I've done that right. <laughs> no, I have. <laughs> but usually when you're allowed to just achieve your goal in private and then kind of quietly congratulate yourself and then tell everybody, I think that's a much easier way to do it. But hey, I've committed now. Um, so yesterday I gave you some very, very brief travel tips. Uh, it was so great filming in Hampstead Heath. I actually did another vlog in London, but the sound on it was terrible. I had um, put my headphones in. I went to this really, really nice wee beer garden in the afternoon. It was gorgeous. I put my headphones in, but they weren't in all the way. So what recorded was actually the sound like out of the bottom of the phone and it was just rubbish. So I looked like an idiot in a beer garden, sitting chatting away about, um, I think it was some more tips on travel and more about organisation. So I'm just going to start from scratch today. So today I wanted to do a couple of minutes on the daily organisation of your time in order to achieve your goal while fitting in the rest of your life. So we've spoke before about um, instead of dividing up your time into like, you know, I've got this meeting here, that meeting there, it's actually blocks of time that you're focused on a particular outcome. And that's perfect. That's, that's a, a really good way to do it. But you also need to allow for real life to get in the way as well. For example, when you're traveling, one of the major headaches about traveling is packing and making sure that you've got enough stuff with you. I can't pack, okay? I don't know if I've told you this story before. I don't think I was doing a vlog at the time. But I went to New York in February for a business trip and I didn't take one jacket, I didn't take one pair of jeans, um, didn't take any proper boots. I took all my Kuwait clothes, like as if it was going to be the same temperature it was in Kuwait. It was absolutely freezing. So the first day that I got there, the only warm clothes I had was my, my running gear. So I put on my running gear. So I've got like joggies, you know, bright pink fluorescent trainers, a running hoodie with ties. And um, I tried to go to the shops really, really early on. And <laughs> there's a shop in the UK called Primark, which if you're watching this in the US, I don't think you have. You definitely don't have it in New York. But I Googled just to see if there was a Primark and it said there was a Primark like right in kind of, uh, I think it was in the financial district. So I was like, brilliant. So I jumped in a taxi, jump out. And I'm like, right, I can't see it yet, but I'm sure it'll be around the corner. No, it's Primark's headquarters. It's not a shop, it's their actual headquarters. So I'm getting in trying to get some clothes and it's just this office. 
So I went round the corner to this shop round the corner and it was like a really, really nice upmarket um, women's shop. So I go in and I, they looked at me like I was a tramp and I said, listen, I've just arrived, I'm on a business trip, um, I don't have anything to wear, I've came completely with the wrong clothes, can you help me with a couple of new outfits? So now all these women in this posh shop are running about after me, right, filling out all these outfits. So we get a couple of, couple of outfits, it comes to like a couple of hundred bucks. Fantastic, go to the till, go to put it through, my card gets declined. And I'm like, no, that's not possible. That's the company card. What the hell's happened? Because my bank didn't realise, well, I hadn't told my bank that I was going abroad. So the card had just been used in Dubai. And then before that, it was the UK. And then it was New York. So they put a stop on my card. So I go outside to try and phone the bank. And I can't phone from my phone because my phone's international. It was just the absolute worst case scenario ever. So I had to, I went round to try and get money out. And then that's when I realised what would happen to the card go back round, so my card's been declined at the till, I've then said don't worry I'll jump in and get money and I come back in dressed like an absolute homeless person going I'm really sorry I'm going to need to put all those clothes back, um, my card's not working so they must have thought I was absolutely at it. So um, I think when I go back to New York I'll have my wee like pretty woman moment of going back in looking like a normal person. <laughs> so yeah that's how bad I am at packing, I've still not got better at it. It's an absolute art form but Likewise, what happens with things like that, they're just really small tasks, right? But they end up taking all your time. And when you're committing to something and when you're setting up a business and you're an entrepreneur, you need to try and outsource as many little tasks like that as you can. It might be hard to try and get somebody to pack your case for you, right? But when it comes to like, you know, get a maiden, if you can, Get somebody to pre if you get somebody to prepare all your meals or else prepare them all on a Sunday so they're all ready for the week. Um you need to do as little of those kind of tasks as possible so that you can focus a hundred percent of your time on starting your business. And if you're just starting out that may seem crazy and I know it probably will because when you just start out you're doing everything yourself and you don't have enough money to hire these people. But as soon as you can, as soon as you start getting a wee bit of money into the business, I would really strongly advise you to outsource as much of your personal life instead of just your business life as you can because it seems really kind of elitist and self-absorbed and stuck up and everything like that. But the more time you spend doing stuff that you're not good at and that doesn't contribute to your overall goal, then the less... Um, quality time you have working on that and let's be honest when you're taking time away from from working towards your dream you want to spend it with friends you want to spend it with family you want to spend it watching Game of Thrones you know like you, you can chill out rather than oh my god I've got a house to clean and you know I've got all these beds to make and I've got all this kind of stuff to do and you know for the cost of having somebody in a couple of times a week just to do that part of your life for you it really makes all the difference so outsource as much of your personal life as you can and um, that means that the stuff that you do still want to do like your interaction with your friends and your, your relationships and all that kind of stuff means that you're a hundred percent present for it and when you're working on your goal you're a hundred percent present for that because what will happen is when you've got all these wee things in your head that you haven't done it builds up into like a kind of snagging list and you end up spending all your time thinking about that. So as soon as something comes up, either find out how you can do it, if it's in your skill set or it's um, a contributory thing that will help towards what you're doing, or find out how you can outsource it, or find out how you can just get rid of it. If it's something that is a, is a regular pain in the arse and you don't want to be doing it, just stop doing it, you know? So it's, it's finding what we things in your life fall into each of those categories and making tough decisions in your personal life as well as in your business life and this is where things come in like you're not going to be able to go to every event you're not going to be able to go go to every um every night out and all these kind of stuff you, you need to prioritize and you're used to that you, you already know that so apply that to everything you need to prioritise what you spend your time on and what you spend your time thinking about because all of these little small niggly things will just build up to actually detract your attention away from what you're doing. So if there is anybody out there who likes packing cases for a living, please get in touch. I really think that's something I would consider paying somebody to do. <laughs> Bro, at least I'd turn up with the right clothes. Okay, I'm going to do another vlog tonight, so I'm going to hit you hard with these ones. And um, I'll speak to you soon. Have a great night. Happy Sunday.